strap in everyone this is going to be a rough one we're talking about the vaccine uh i'm danny burton and this is danny talks about episode four caleb is i don't know he's somewhere um (laughs) and i'm not in my normal danny talks about kind of set for a few different things that i'll bring up briefly the first is that it's a real hassle to move all the equipment out and i was tired this morning and didn't want to do it Uh, On top of that, the angle, don't like it, so we're going to do something else anyway. And third, my dog is asleep on the chair, and it's quite adorable. If I can get a picture, I'll throw it up now. If there isn't a picture coming up now, it's because uh, the dog got up and started to bite or chew something. But uh, today, we are talking about we are talking about the vaccine and and as as I've stared at the news, as I've gone through a whole bunch of things, there's a lot I could talk about, but the biggest question I have is what happened in the world recently? Throughout the whole pandemic, it's as if people have lost their mind. And, and I think it's part of being told to stay at home for long periods of time that has just affected people's brains in a, a manner that caused them to just start to hate up everyone else in the process and it's been difficult i i actually started picking up on this in driving where people just stopped caring about other people and driving they're like i'm going to turn now i'm going to do this and it was just tense and and there's a lot of tension that's building up but on top of that there's a lot of selfishness that's come alongside it that it's it's about me it's about my stance it's about my beliefs and everything i think is true and and anybody that disagrees, well, they're just not as important because I have the truth. Perhaps it's the amount of time that all of us have spent not in interacting to other people, but have been choosing to do it through the internet. I enjoy a good FaceTime. I actually just got off a FaceTime to a really good friend of mine. Hey, Lander, what up? Uh, but it's not the same. <laughs> there is a difference in interaction between... Uh, getting to talk to a person through a phone or through a screen and and being able to actually be present there. And this is a big difference that I think a lot of Americans and a lot of the culture overall is just m- missing out on in the process. And now as, as places are starting to go back to needing to shelter in place, uh, quarantine, all these things, it seems as if people have started to fall back into the attitude of, of I'm the most important around and there's nobody else important in the process. And for a good amount of us, there's been a focus on reestablishing our like all about my rights, even if it means I'm injuring other people in the process. Then in the midst of the pandemic, we had the vaccine. And when they made the announcement about the vaccine is uh, a matter of a perspective based on the political party that you decided to vote for. Democrats think they made the vaccine. Republicans think they made the vaccine. And I'm not going to try and argue that uh, debate at all because I think it's relatively pointless and stupid to debate. But needless to say, there is a debate. There shouldn't be, but there's a debate. So. Some have accepted it immediately and thinking that it's 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 our path back to a normal. And uh, that's based in this idea that all of us got tired of claiming this is the new normal, the new normal, the new normal. Others are skeptical based on years of distrust of government authority and government statements that that there's questions as to can this v- v- vaccine even be trusted. And during a time... Uh, when the w- world is losing its mind, it was a prime opportunity that Christians could come in and be the l- l- the l- 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 the light of truth and grace, and care o- about our neighbor in the process and point people to Jesus. Except that didn't really happen, or at least not from my perspective or the perspective of the <laughs> world, and. And to be clear, it did occur on a micro scale. Absolutely, there are people that do care about others. And maybe it's just perhaps that that a person caring about another person doesn't make the news because it's insanely boring. But instead of, 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 of choosing to extend grace, empathy, and truth, it got crazier instead. <laughs> on both ends, uh, uh, the church chose politics and ideology o- over doctrine and grace. In fact, Barna, I, th- I think it's Barna, is actually putting out r- 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 
research now that's stating that people are choosing churches uh, not based on their theology, but on their ideology, on their political backing, political l- 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 leaning, and where they stand on the issues that are are prevalent to our day-to-day instead of the issues that are prevalent to our eternity. And this is very, very problematic. Our day-to-day is influenced by our view of, of eternity, not the other way around. And our our theology is important, but our th- 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 theology is applied to our ideology. Our ideology isn't applied to our theology. And many people have gotten this horribly, horribly backwards in the process. We cannot choose churches based on ideology because all that does is create an echo chamber. If I'm choosing a church based on their political affiliation, then I kind of have missed the point of church to begin (laughs) with, that the church isn't about political ideology, but about a God that came, died on a cross, and rose again in order that all of us could be with him forever. So to choose a church based on ideology uh, misses the entire point. Ideology only only concentrates on on today, on this on this earth, on 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 this time, and ignores all of eternity. In preacher terms, this is a uh, uh, kind of the battle between the v- 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 vertical and the horizontal. Both of them are important, but the order is also important. I need to understand my relationship to God first before I try and apply that to others and and the uh, the day to day. Connecting to God, that's that's the vertical because it goes up, but the horizontal goes to each other and through our day to day. As it tells us in 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 the Great Commandment, uh, the uh, the Pharisees and scribes they come up to Jesus and say, "Hey, give us the greatest commandment." And and the first thing that he tells them is to love the Lord your God with your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And that's the first commandment. And then he gives them the application of that in number two, and love your neighbor as yourself. But instead, we've kind of chosen to pick our churches and, and, and affiliations based, uh, based on ideology instead of on truth of Scripture. We've abandoned this idea that Scripture is even authoritative, and, and, and actually Scripture just uh, needs to confirm everything that I already believe. And this is not good and is as dangerous as any of the other political affiliations. And it just creates an echo chamber that I've chosen to only associate around people that they agree with me. I create God in my own image instead of me being created in his. Now, I know what many people just did there. They thought they stopped and heard that and thought, that's correct. That's all the other end is doing. You got them absolutely. You nailed them. Now, now they just need to do this, and they just, they just, they just, they just preach. Go on, brother. Uh, but I want to be very clear about the thing I just said. Even though there's probably clapping and and all this, and I'm gonna borrow some uh, kind of a phrase out of a better preacher than me. I don't know why you're clapping. I'm talking about you. The issue at hand isn't a conservative or a liberal issue. In fact, both ends are to blame in this process. All of us need to own our own bits in this division that is occurring in our culture and across the globe and extend grace and love to one another in the process. And now that the v- vaccine is out, or three different kinds, and potentially a booster shot, uh, we have to be okay extending this kind of grace to others while standing in truth at the same time. You have to hold grace and truth at the same time, but also w- working together and owning our own parts. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, it tells us this. I, therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all 
humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in l- l- love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. We've stopped trying to build the bond of peace that's based in the unity of Jesus Christ. By choosing to our, our church is based on ideology, it's created not one church but two. It's created a division straight down the, the, the middle, and the echo chamber is it just pushes those two pieces further and further and further and further. And now that there's an issue of a vaccine, We've elevated this as a matter of spiritual importance to a person's eternal destiny and salvation. I'm not going to claim the vaccine isn't important. I am claiming it's maybe been overemphasized in all of culture currently. But again, this is a bipartisan issue. And I'm asking that if you're paying attention to this podcast to actually pay attention to both parts. I'm going to try and be f- f- fair to both ends and, and, and bring out the points of both uh, of, of, of the arguments, but also understand that if I'm just agreeing on the criticism of the other and not taking time and re- reflecting on my own, then I'm missing the whole point of building the bond of peace to begin with. Uh, to claim that I'm not at fault is a complete misunderstanding of what it means to build the bond of peace. Building that bond, coming together, in fact, all relationships take work in working together. And I'm not perfect, and I don't think anybody else is perfect. And I need to be able to go, these are the places that I'm not perfect, and maybe the other po- uh, the other argument, maybe they have some good points. Instead of jumping straight to anger, instead jump straight to understanding to try and understand the place they're coming out of and the things that they're saying. And so to start, uh, to, to, to the left, um, people who are not getting the v- vaccine are not doing it because they're trying to kill all the people around them. They hate grandma and children or just being selfish. Uh, this is a thing that's come up over and over. I have a uh, kind of Facebook feed that tends to be... Um, a little bit of a mix between two of them, uh, uh, between the left and the right, and and there's a bunch of criticisms on both ends. But to say that people that don't get the vaccine are just doing it because they're being selfish is just it, it is just unfair. There were, there are a few different people I've I've watched post v- 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 vaccinate or die. Now, what is the point in that? I mean, first of all, you're a financial analyst who's posting this on Facebook and then starting arguments in the comments. Vaccinate or die isn't a good argument. In fact, it's pretty inflammatory in the process that if a person doesn't vaccinate, they deserve to die. I actually don't agree with that at all. It's a complex choice that's being made. But for a lot of things, I've noticed that there's this, this idea of I'm going to create an objection to the thing I think they're objecting and then talk about the stupidness of that objection. But the thing that doesn't actually happen is you're not actually paying attention to the objections. The objection isn't that the v- v- vaccine is is it, it is bad or that they don't believe or or that they think any kind of v- 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 vaccine is terrible, or that they're saying like, well, I'm just trying to be selfish, and I'm just trying to kill the people around me, and all that. It's actually not the thing they're saying. The, the things they're claiming are, are, are based in being able to trust it, because it was done quickly, it was done fast, it's not FDA approved, all these things. And instead, anytime these really good questions are brought up, the only answer that they get is, we'll stop being a selfish jerk and just get the vaccine. Doing that doesn't help. Most conservatives that I know, um, 
or they have actual questions about the safety of it. Uh, they feel isolated and, a and alienated by the political process and being constantly told to shut up and do as they're told. But their questions are coming out of a place of concern. And rather than answer these questions uh, about the safety of the vaccine that doesn't operate in a normal kind of a manner, but isn't, I, th I think it's an mRNA vaccine, we're told to just be quiet and to shut up and to follow the ex example of people kind of like this. Hi, my name is Cooper, and this is a day in my life as a White House intern. <laughs> This cannot be our strategy. I mean, seriously, this whole idea of uh, of of bringing in some some TikTokers to tell us it's 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 good to get it's good to get the vaccine. Okay, there are real questions being asked. Instead of answers, we get Benny drama. Uh, so so I'm I'm just gonna give a little bit of undergrad psychology i do have a degree in it but it's a bachelor so it's borderline useless uh but go ahead and take this how you will when a person doesn't think that their audience is going to think through the information that they're telling them instead of making an informational informative thing uh kind of argument they they instead are going to make an emotional argument yeah, they might pepper in a few facts, but the goal is to get people to feel and act instead of think and act. And thus, anytime a person is 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 trying to think and then act, uh, they're just being told that their feelings are incorrect, and that their identity, as as a consequence of that, is is horribly misguided and off. Their feelings are incorrect, even though they're only trying to engage the facts. This entire video of, of Benny Drama as a day, as an intern, um, as it was put out, people actually asked, is this a parody? This is a parody, correct? This has to be a parody. Why would this be the real strategy they're doing? But it's not, and it is. It's, it, it is the actual strategy they're doing, and it's not a parody. And that's n n n not the only part of it either. They... Uh, a few contracts got out that they they're they they're targeting a media influencers and TikTokers about at the age of 18 in order to encourage people to get the vaccine. Um, the most strange thing I ever watched is uh, Dr. Fauci be interviewed by Jacob Satorius, who is known for um, uh, being a a teen music star ish. Uh, yeah, th th a good amount of hip thrusting and doing a song about y y y YouTube and barbecue chips. Uh, uh, to have this person be the person that it's their job to tell me to get v v v vaccinated as they go through a very, very scripted interview demonstrates that the strategy that they're anticipating uh, doesn't include people thinking. Which, to be fair, is probably correct. Uh <laughs> People have stopped thinking. They've stopped analyzing the facts. They've stopped doing this. Instead, they read a head. They read a headline of an article and they share it and they don't think about it. So maybe, maybe the strategy isn't stupid, but it is pretty insulting. In telling people that they're a racist, homophobic jerk, only trying to kill the old people in the trans community, doesn't tend to endear people to your point of view especially if it's not the statement they're making. You won't get a lot of people over to your s s side of the argument if all that you're doing is just accusing them of killing other people. Do you want proof? 2016. For years before that, uh, it felt as if the um, uh, uh, conservatives over and over, they'd been called racist and homophobic and bigoted and all these things that are very very big accusations they're huge and just time and time again they got called that blm started during this matter and there were some actual questions about hey is this a good idea are are these things okay or is there account is there accountability on both ends and, and there have been actual questions that got swallowed up in the media 24-hour kind of news cycle that instead of 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 getting answers to these questions 
um, they they are told they were being uh, uh, bigots and, and 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 terrible people because they questioned why cops are getting killed in the street. And so out of that, you can only get two types of people to make it through. The first is that the person that um, it, it doesn't change their internal beliefs, but they just are quiet about it. And that, I think, is the thing that you found in 2016 as people, as all the polls told us that Hillary is going to win by a landslide and then didn't. But the other person that y y y y y you get is, is the tyrannical mud monster who honestly, kind of enjoys getting the uh, uh, a mud thrown at him and thrives off it. Or Donald Trump. Uh, uh, Donald Trump thrives in criticism because it fuels him a little bit. And, and, and the more name-calling, the, 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 the more things that the people tell about him that is unfair, it just fuels him more. And so the more they pushed him, the, 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 the more he pushed back, and he was a bully. For years, they tried to figure out how did we get Donald Trump, but the answer is, well, they made him by by by, by stopping and or by f f failing to to take the honest, genuine concerns of people and instead projecting the smug attitude of "I know better, so shut up, just do the thing I say," and demonizing the other. Side, it just pushed people to be quiet but not change their ideology and v v vote in the man that they thought could actually speak th the thing they were too afraid to. So to the left, stop and take a moment and stop trying to demonize the other end that aren't getting the vaccine yet. They're, they have questions. And if our goal is to get people v vaccinated, then it means they need their questions answered and not some 19-year-old TikToker telling us that it's okay to do. There are actual questions that need actual answers. And extend grace in that also. If, if the attitude is, I'm smarter and I know better, then no one's going to actually follow y you. Now, if y you've been paying attention to this whole thing and said, that's correct, go ahead and you, you tell them, tell the liberal what to snowflakes, blah, 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 then I need you to sit down for just a moment as well because we got plenty of crazy on the conservative end as well. The vaccine is not the mark of the beast, nor is it tantamount to not trusting God. And to be honest, the amount of times that this has come up is absurd and disturbing. Uh, the, 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 the vaccine is not the mark of the beast, period. So I'm going to do a thing I tend to not do because of the amount of times it's done poorly. I'm going to uh, to make a few statements on end times theology. The mark of the beast is not a thing that a person can be tricked into getting. Uh, it's not clever advertising as, as that person talking about the monster energy drinks uh, as a path to Satan. It, it isn't that I can be tricked into getting it. The mark of the beast is about those that are choosing to follow the, uh, the Antichrist or the beast, and they're pledging their allegiance to this Antichrist instead of to the actual Christ. It is a mark that designates them as different than a follower of Christ. If I think that if I get a vaccine, it's the mark of the beast, then that I've, I've done a few different things. The first, it way elevates the vaccine to a spiritual end, which it is not. It is a vaccine. It, 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 it isn't a, a, a spiritual a magic that occurs in a person. Um, and, and I'm trying to keep this on a consistent end. It's not spiritual on either end. Getting it or not getting it is not exactly a spiritual matter. Now, granted, I do think there are people that as they're praying through it, some of them need to get it. Some of them don't need to get it. But to claim that a person can lose their salvation or be abandoning their faith because they got a vaccine, it also just puts... It, it also just creates a, a works-based kind of salvation that just has extra steps. If I can be tricked into getting it, it's a works-based kind of salvation. And, and to be honest, it's not even that good of a trick. 
uh, it's 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 not that good of a trick to say this this vaccine will invalidate your faith because that's a ludicrous statement. It's a medical vaccine, and to say I'm abandoning faith in God is dumb. I don't apply this to any other aspect of a mili- of, of a medical treatment. If I break an arm, I'm not going to claim, well, God will God will take care of me, so I'm not going to go to the doctor or get a cast or or any of that. There's as strong of an argument to make that a cast of a broken bone is as much of the mark of the beast as a vaccine is. Which is to say there's no argument at all. It's a stupid debate. On top of that, um, to say that there's there's this thing that I can get that is going to invalidate my faith is just creating extra steps to faith. A person can have faith if they get it or if they don't. It doesn't super affect our eternal destiny. Assigning extra spirituality to this decision is bonkers. Um, uh, Guilting people because they're getting it is bonkers. And not just that, it's entirely and incredibly insensitive to the thing that's going on. I have friends um, in, 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 in healthcare. I know multiple people in COVID uh, uh, floors of hospitals. Actually, a few that started off, they're brand new nurses who I deeply respect and, and, and appreciate their opinion as being um, uh, both thought-provoking but graceful in the process. They've said they're inundated. Uh, at the place I'm at, there's a ton, a ton going on, that they're they're needing to be t- 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 uh, to make very difficult kind, uh, kind of decisions based on bad information. They're overrun, overworked, scared, and approaching depression. Uh, to them, they've been battling this for 18 months. There's been a constant stream of people with COVID, 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 COVID. And now they have to make decisions on, I don't have enough oxygen to give people, so which people do I not give it to? But for many of us that stay behind a keyboard and just at the dismissive wave of a hand, um, cl- uh, claim that the virus isn't that fatal. Well, I personally know a family that they, they their uh, guy's wife died out of COVID and I know multiple people that were hospitalized because of it. If I go up to them and tell them, well, it's not that fatal. Um, they'd be very offended and I, I'd be breaking that bond of peace and they should be offended. It's insensitive. It's incredibly insensitive to say, well, it's not that bad to a person that is in the middle of it. And even if the percentage of death is down, can we for a moment be quiet and understand that uh, over 29 million people have contracted COVID and 515,000 people have died? It's 515,000. I don't care about the percentage of people that die out of it, but that uh, these are 515,000 stories that ended because of this thing. And if I just go on Facebook and blast it as, well, it's not that bad. I mean, think of any of them at all and take time to mourn those that are, to mourn alongside those that are mourning and, 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 and care over them. They need grace during this time. It's, it's an actual thing that's going on, even if it isn't that fatal. And even if, if even if it is not incredibly fatal there's a quality of life issue that's going on also 29 million people is a lot and this is a big deal to wave this off is not a big deal is just inappropriate this constant uh, uh, kind of assertion of my rights my rights my rights can border the line on unloving when viewed through the lens of Philippians 2, 5 through 8, that have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality 
but with God as a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to uh, to the point of death, even on a cross. Uh, this idea of of I need to assert my rights at all times. I I think there there is a thing to that, but don't press it too hard. As Christians, our call is to give up our rights in the manner that Christ did in order that God be glorified. Now, I'm not claiming give them all up and just throw them all out and be okay giving them over to big daddy government, but at the same time, understand that the, uh, these are actual things going on and I can care about other people in the process. A friend of mine that does a missionary work in Mexico, he actually uh, gave me a very challenging stance on it. Um, at the time, he was kind of against it for a few different causes that aren't even actually important to the story, but he told me that the moment that it it becomes an impossibility to do the a missionary work in Mexico, he's going to go get the vaccine. And now that he has a, a trip coming up, uh, that's exactly the thing that happened. But uh, to him, the gospel was more important than anything else that he could do. And his call, it, it was to care about this people, even if it cost him things. And it does. Building that bond of peace costs us things. And now, I'm not going to stand or I'm, just, I'm not going to get on this podcast and say, uh, get the vaccine, don't get the vaccine. And I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to take a stance on that. And do you know why? Because I'm not a doctor. Uh, this is a medical decision that people, they need to make between their doctor and, and, and the situation they have. It is different f f f for each person. Uh, and, it, and there needs to be time and care given to actually going into the details of this thing and determining the best course of action. I have friends on both ends that are getting it and aren't getting it. Even in my own household, I have a family member that is getting it, and I have a family member that isn't giving it, uh, getting it. And to be honest, they're both okay because the situation is different in both of them. But no matter the stance, we have to stop trying to slam each other in in the process and understand and and keep the mindset that I know better than everybody else. It's not a healthy mindset. I don't know. There's a lot going on, and there needs to, uh, to be an amount of grace given to those people that that, that they keep differing uh, opinions th 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 than ours. And, and I have to stop putting them down by saying, wake up, sheeple, which is just the stupidest phrase and is a clear indication that I'm going to tune you out. If there, if there's a statement of "wake up, sheeple," then I've probably stopped paying attention to y your opinion entirely. And maintaining the bond of peace costs us personally because it demonstrates it's not all all about us. I don't have all the answers. I'm not going to have all the answers, and we need each other in the process. There is one Lord, one God, one S Savior, Jesus Christ. And there's a, a nothing else that is, is bigger or greater than that. Instead of choosing to base things on ideology, I'm choosing to base things on what person are my brother and sister in Christ and giving them in, in all other people grace in the process. How we handle this world, Christians, how we handle this will display to the world the God we serve. Now, I can be angry and upset about the vaccines, but to a certain extent, I need to bring that to God before I bring it to, to, uh, to Facebook and Twitter. I need to take those thoughts and crucify them on the, 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 the cross and then ask God, what do you want me to do? All of us need to be challenged in this, that as we go out, into the public, either on social media or in person, that all of us don't become these balls of hate that snipe at each other and cause massive division. We have to care about each other, extend grace to each other, and hold each other. The world has gone crazy. 
or better than that it's descended into darkness but the light sh- 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 shines bright in in the darkness and Jesus Christ is our l- l- light and s- so our our call isn't to just go out and be angry and further descend in, into division and into darkness but but to be the light of the w- world to 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 be able to display the grace and glory of Christ in all a- in all avenues of who I am and everything I do. So my challenge to people is, hey, get the vaccine, don't get the vaccine. I don't really care, to be honest. I care about caring about each other and, and, and being able to, to build that bond of peace together by coming together as a, a one body, by being able to become a nothing, to take my preferences and crucify them in order to understand the, 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 the thing that God calls me to do. So we, so we, we, there's no we, it's just me here. I want your thoughts uh, within reason. Um, The comments aren't a place to start debates, but all right, we'll go with it if, if I need to. Uh, We want to hear from you and Caleb and I, Caleb might be back next week. Honestly, I haven't looked at the calendar. It's been a long week, but we want to hear from you. So if you have questions or comments about things Caleb and I can talk about, uh, Please feel free to go to the gospelpost.com slash nobody special. Um, that's our our kind of oh, that's our our landing page for the podcast. And there's a form at the bottom to be able to ask questions or just say hi. Caleb and I both appreciate it as those come in. It's just kind of nice. So actually, go ahead and do that because it makes us feel nice inside. Uh, if you you're on social media, go to. Um, a Facebook or Instagram at Nobody Special Podcast, and it's okay to send us a message through there, comment on our post, and, and please give it a share. Please, if this episode is enjoyable, which I slammed both sides of the political spectrum, so maybe it's not, maybe go to one of our other episodes and share those. Uh, I would super appreciate it. That helps us grow our audience and extend out to other places. It's uh, We don't pay f- for advertising because I'm massively cheap, and <laughs> so... Anytime people do that, it really helps us out. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning in to Danny Talks About, a podcast within a podcast for people who like podcasts. And I'll see you next time. Bye. (music)